Welcome to the Just Ingredients Podcast. I'm Cara Lynn, and here we talk all things nourishing to the mind, body, and soul. This is a place where you can find just good ingredients to life. If you feel like your natural deodorant has rubbed your underarms raw, not stopped the stink, or you haven't made the switch from aluminum, try Just Ingredients Organic Magnesium Deodorant containing high levels of magnesium to neutralize odor-causing bacteria. It is sure to leave you smelling fresh all day. Formulated without baking soda, which can feel like sandpaper to the skin, Just Ingredients deodorant uses organic beeswax to soothe the skin, ensuring smooth application. Just Ingredients is committed to its ingredients and only uses the highest quality natural ingredients that come from the earth. Just Ingredients magnesium deodorants never contain aluminum, baking soda, artificial fragrance, filler ingredients, propylene glycol, phthalates, or parabens. So if you want a non-irritating organic natural deodorant that actually works, you want to try Just Ingredients magnesium deodorant today. Available in six scents and unscented, you are sure to find one you love. For 20% off your deodorant, use code JIPODCAST4 at justingredients.us. Once again, that's code JIPODCAST4, like the number four, at justingredients.us for 20% off your deodorant purchase. Dr. Calvin Ng is a natural health care practitioner in Orange County, California, who treats the body as a whole using chiropractic medicine, applied kinesiology, functional medicine, Chinese medicine, neuroemotional technique, quantum neurology, and craniopathy. He believes that all health dysfunctions and diseases have an underlying imbalance physically, biochemically, and emotionally, and by treating the root causes, the body will heal itself. His comprehensive approach helps restore normal physiology, strengthens the body, and allows the systems of the body to function in harmony. His mission is to educate others about the endless possibilities of holistic healing, inspire people to live life to their fullest potential, and elevate the well-being of humanity. Welcome everyone back to the show. Today, I am really excited to have a guest on that I met personally at Expo West just a couple months ago, and I've been following him for the last few months on social media and love everything that he teaches. And so I'm really excited for him to be here today to talk to him. And so it's Dr. Calvin Ng. So welcome to the show. Thank you so much. Um, I'm really excited to be here. And it, just, it was amazing meeting you and seeing your booth, Just Ingredients, um, at the Expo West. I got to meet you guys and learn learn about your story. And uh, it, it really moved me because, you know, it's, it's those stories uh, that when people go through a health crisis, right, that I think really moves them into their purpose. And I believe that you guys are serving your purpose and providing, you know, things that are good ingredients um, that are healthy for people. And then also what you're doing with the podcast, which is educating people about health and wellness and how to just better their life. So I'm just grateful to be here and grateful that you're giving me an opportunity to share what I do every day um, and what I believe in and what I'm passionate in. Well, thank you so much. That is so nice of you. It was really great meeting you. So before we dive into the topics, will you just tell my listeners a little bit about yourself and your background? Absolutely. So as you said, I'm a chiropractor. That's what I was traditionally trained in. Um, and how I got into that path was I was always into health. I never wanted to a job where I had to sit down at a desk and, you know, just do the nine to five thing. But so I, I and I was really athletic at that time uh, when I was younger. So, and I just wanted to serve people in in a way where I can I can do something that requires movement. So naturally, I actually thought about physical therapy. So I got into a little bit of that, and I figured that that's wow, that's not what I wanted. I I looked into physical therapy at hospitals, physical therapy at in clinics, and um, I love physical therapists and what they do, but it just wasn't right for me. I wanted something a little bit more uh, all encompassing. And I uh, started doing personal training. And when I did personal training, I learned about nutrition. I learned about uh, different types of functional movements. And I really enjoyed that aspect because some, something that my cousin, who's a medical doctor, said to me was, it seems like you are helping people before 
they get worse before they get sick. And I really admire that because the people I see, it feels like it's too late. And that has always stayed with inside of me. And so I thought that was really profound how she said it. And I didn't really realize at the time. So when she said something, when she said that to me, I realized that there was something greater that maybe I had to explore, but I didn't know what that was yet. And I was in college and I was, I was really lost. I was about to graduate and I was actually kind of having anxiety of like, what, what should I do next with my life? I was like, should I go back to physical therapy? And then one of my professors said, why don't you, who, who knew me well, she said, why don't you um, look into chiropractic? And I go, wow, chiropractic. I guess, I guess I can check that out. And, uh, you know, I already cracked my friends' backs in the dorms. <laughs> I guess I could get paid to do that. So why not? I have nothing else to lose. So I went to um, the chiropractic school to to do an interview and just kind of ask them questions about what this is all about. How is chiropractic different from, you know, medicine? How's it different from physical therapy? How's it different from, you know, just any other modalities being an acupuncturist and whatnot? And I really didn't know. And um, they told me that chiropractic is really a primary care profession. And we are there to essentially help people get better naturally without drugs and surgery. Um, and you can run things like labs and x-rays and MRIs and pretty much do a lot of the diagnostics that a medical doctor can do, except the only thing that you're not doing is just poking needles in people and, and giving drugs and doing surgery. So I go, well, I have no interest in doing those things. And I have a lot of interest in having something that's all encompassing. So this sounds cool. So I went into chiropractic and in my first week there, there was club week. And I met this person who ended up becoming uh, a great friend of mine and also a mentor who I looked up to. And he ran something called Applied Kinesiology Club. And I had studied kinesiology as a, uh, as a major in college. And I go, oh, okay, this is great. Like I, I could, I could do this. Like I'm naturally good at this. And, you know, I was a straight A student, so no problem. I could do applied kinesiology. And he just, he put, he put his hand on my shoulder and he looked at me in, in the eye and said, "This is completely different. You have no idea what you're getting into, and it's about to be awesome." So, long story short. Uh, I went, I ventured into that path of applied kinesiology, which we're going to talk about. And my, my whole life changed, my whole perspective of life uh, changed. How I view the world, how I treat patients now, um, how I live my life completely changed after, you know, my introduction of applied kinesiology. So there's so much there. <laughs> But that essentially what started uh, my, my education and me venturing down into this path of holistic health. Well, that's so interesting. And what we're going to talk about today are, are those different um, things that you studied like chiropractic care and applied kinesiology, because I don't know if everybody really knows exactly what that is or what it can help. So let's just start with chiropractic medicine. Is chiropractic medicine something different than just going to a chiropractor? Yeah. So when I say chiropractic medicine, so let's define medicine, right? Medicine is the science and art of diagnosing and treating disease or, or injury um, and maintaining health. That, that's the definition that uh, is from like Merriam Webster. So that's the definition of medicine. And if we look at chiropractic, what that means is chiropractic actually means hand practice. Chiro means hand. Um, so do by hand. Okay. And how the philosophy of chiropractic is to help the, the body function better so that it doesn't have to have disease essentially. Right. Uh, and it's, it's doing so in a natural way well, without drugs and surgery and so chiropractic medicine is derived from, or chiropractic, right? The philosophy of chiropractic came from D.D. Palmer. D.D. Palmer was the uh, creator of chiropractic. And he said that the cause of disease is due to trauma, toxins, and auto-suggestion, which are thoughts. So 
these three things cause disease and dysfunctions and ailments for people. So nowadays, where we think of chiropractic, uh, or when someone says, oh, you're a chiropractor, my neck hurts, my, my low back hurts, right? My, oh, my, my, my knee hurts. Um, can you help me fix that? And I go, yeah, absolutely. However, um, there's so much more to chiropractic than just low back pain and neck pain and the physical issues, right? So I think that what I want to help people understand is that chiropractic is not really a treatment method, in my opinion. It's really a lifestyle. So just some backstory on how D.D. Palmer created chiropractic is that it actually the practice of like physical, like uh, vertebral manipulation, which are the adjustments, right? Dates back to thousands and thousands of years. People used to call them bone setters. Um, and in, actually in ancient times, Egyptians and Greeks, like I think 3000 years ago, said that disease and illness was caused by deformation, right? It's like structural deformation mm. and treated by uh, temple sleep, mm. prayers, herbs, laying on of hands, uh, baths, diet, and lifestyle. So, you know, they didn't have medicine, they didn't have surgery, you know, they didn't have any of those things, but they used natural methods to heal their illnesses. And they believe that these illnesses came from deformation. And when someone is ill, you can see these deformations or what chiropractors call subluxations which are really these blockages or interferences in the nervous system communication of the nervous system um, with the physical body. So the nervous system really means the central nervous system. And the central nervous system is the brain and the spinal cord. So what protects the spinal cord is the spine. There's 24 vertebrae in the spine, right? And then you have your sacrum and your pelvis and all that. So how all those things function all together is meaningful to a chiropractor in modern day chiropractic. This is what I, I learned in chiropractic uh, in chiropractic school in my program is that I think chiropractic programs are trying to get away from that philosophy and they're trying to um, go into a space where it it's more medical like and with more medical medicine, uh, mainstream medicine or allopathic medicine, it is a standard of care right? If a patient comes in with XYZ symptom, you would do XYZ treatment, right? And, and you wouldn't think outside the box, right? There's a, there's a protocol. And that is what they're trying to do with uh, the chiropractic profession. And I, I think it's a sad thing because um, our history, is, there's so much richness in the history. And I believe that chiropractic really kind of sparked right? Holistic health in a way, just with, with that core statement alone from D.D. D. Palmer, which is the cause of disease is due to trauma, toxins, and thoughts. In applied kinesiology, we say, say a similar saying, which is uh, we have something called the triad of health, is that your health is made out of the structural, chemical, and mental emotional, right? And that's called the triad of health. So that's how I treat every day is I treat the triad. I treat those three things, right? Physical, chemical, emotional and tying it all together. So in a nutshell, chiropractic medicine is really about helping people address those issues of their physical, chemical, and mental, emotional uh, states. That is really interesting because I think most people think of chiropractic care as, like you said, oh, I threw out my lower back, I need to go see a chiropractor, or my neck has a huge kink, or my neck is sore, I've got to go get adjusted. So you're saying that people with a lot of different health issues could go to the chiropractor for care. So like what other type of issues could you go see a chiropractor for? Yeah. So now there's a, there's a chiropractic technique for everyone, as I always say, right? There's, I, I don't know how many, there must be like thousands or maybe hundreds. Um, so I don't, I only know like a good, I've studied a good, maybe 10 to 20 techniques. Now, every technique was developed by a, a chiropractor or somebody who have, you know, taken the information, dissected on their own, done their own research, done their own experimentations, and created it and made it their own. As far as I know, when I go to when I go to different seminars of, of different techniques, they all work. They all work. And the reason why they all work is not because 
that they all work for everybody. The reason why they work is because they work for a specific group of people, right? Some people might like more gentle type chiropractic where they don't want the manual adjustments, right? And there's, there's techniques for that. There's things like activator or sacral occipital technique. Um, there's people who do want the more physical, uh, more, uh, you know, heavier adjusting. Um, they want more work done on their body and there's different techniques for that too. And then there's people who want things like functional medicine, where they go to a chiropractor and they're seek, looking for, Hey, I need you to help me with my nutrition, with my gut health, with my brain health. Um, you know, my doctor said I have the X, Y, Z diagnosis. Can you help me with that? Can you help me live a healthier lifestyle? So there's, there's that. Um, and then there are chiropractic techniques that address the, uh, emotional side of things, right? Not, it's not therapy. It doesn't replace therapy. doesn't replace uh, what a psychotherapist or psychiatrist can do. But what it does is what we talk about, one of the techniques that I do is called neuroemotional technique. And it's not treating any psychiatric issues. What it is, is is unlocking these emotions that are stuck in the body. And essentially what we're trying to do is we're trying to treat the body and allow can, things to communicate better, right? What are these things? There's a universal intelligence in the body right? People can call it the universe. People can call it um, the soul. People can call it God. People can call it, and now in modern day, people can call it ATP, which is uh, made from the mitochondria, which is the energy that we have. In acupuncture, you call it chi, right? There's this energy, there's this thing inside the body that makes it living, right? And what we're trying to do is help open up that flow and make sure that there are no roadblocks that are blocking this energy. And if there is any blockages, if there are blockages that are af affecting energy flow to, let's say, an organ, then that can manifest as a disease, whether it's liver disease or heart disease or gut issues, right? Autoimmune, what have you, right? So our goal is to help people remove those roadblocks and allow the body to do its own thing, right? The body is a self-healing machine and it's very smart. It's smart because there's this universal intelligence. Till this day, we still don't fully understand what's happening in the body and how it heals and how it does things and how it grows. Our job is to not do the healing, right? Which is why I tell people, I'm like, there's no, no person is a healer, right? We are our own healers. Our bodies heal on its own. What we have to do is to identify what those roadblocks are and, and remove it so that the body can do it on its own. So anybody can really go to the chiropractor. Um, they go for various reasons, right? Most people go for physical reasons. I'm here to tell people that you can go because you should go to a chiropractor, not because you have a back pain. You should go before you have a back pain and you should go because what you're looking to do is you're looking to prevent illness. And if you, an ounce of prevention is worth more than a pound of cure. True. Okay. So this is really interesting. Do all chiropractors treat emotional things like that? Or you just have to like call around or research and ask around as to what chiropractors do what? Yeah, great question. No. So I would say majority of chiropractors, majority of our chiropractic profession right now is purely structural, right? Which is I treat low back pain, neck pain, and sport injuries. And then there are your functional medicine chiropractors, who will do lab work and run lab work and go, okay, well, these things are off on your labs. We're going to give you supplements. Uh, we're going to change your lifestyle and we're going to help you live in this way. Right. And then there are chiropractors who do applied kinesiology, which is what I do, um, which is muscle testing. So we do muscle testing on top of like lab testing on top of other, uh, diagnostics. Uh, and we combine everything right? To treat the patient and to treat whatever, you know, whatever condition that they're coming in with. And then the mental emotional, that is probably even more rare. I would say it's, there's a few different techniques for it, but the most popular one that I know is neuro emotional technique, which is practiced more by more than just chiropractors. It's, but it, it was created by a chiropractor um, and it derived from applied kinesiology. So it's like almost any 
doctor, like trying to find any doctor out there. You just have to go do the research and go see which one's a good fit for you and what your health needs are at the time. Right. So if people are looking for this holistic type of health, which uh, which I believe holistic health really stemmed from applied kinesiology, and the philosophies from there. If people are look, trying to you know find a, a doctor who who practices AK applied kinesiology, then they can go to ICAK icakusa.com uh, and they can find uh, someone who's certified uh, through the website or through through that organization of International College of Applied Kinesiology um, and they can they can find somebody local to them they can do a little google search and and see if there's a applied kinesiologist around in their area there's different techniques like again neuro emotional technique which is net 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 mind body net mind body dot com um and they can find somebody who is practicing net in their area too and this is this is the downfall this is the this is the bad part about what we do is that there's no standard of care right so it's not like we can just go in and be like okay well let's look for this person who's a specialist like in medicine you'll go to like if you go to kaiser you know i need a specialist who can who can look at my foot, right? That's called a podiatrist. I need a specialist to look at my kidneys. That's a nephrologist. So unfortunately, they're in, in what I tell people is like, I, I'm not a specialist. I'm not a, you know, I'm, I, I, I don't focus on one thing, right? I focus on everything, the human body. And I believe everything is connected. And, you know, that's how I treat the person. So it's like, it's very hard to explain sometimes to people about, you know, this, like the perspective of how we view the human body. Right. You treat the body as a whole, which all the different parts of the body do affect one another. And so it is important to look at the body as a whole. Um, you were talking about applied kinesiology. So I want to talk about that because maybe a lot of listeners don't know what that is. So will you explain to yeah. them what that is and how that's different maybe than just a chiropractor? Yeah. So applied kinesiology is a chiropractic technique developed by uh, Dr. George Goodhart, who was actually the first U.S. Olympic chiropractor. Um, I think it was back in 88 or something like that. And it's AK, applied kinesiology, is a system of diagnosis, right? To analyze and assess the body and to determine the priority treatment method for it. And that's really important. AK is simply a system that... I utilize. It's a lens that I look through. And it's not a it's not necessarily a treatment method, but it's a system to determine what's the best course of action. So something that I tell people is the right thing done at the wrong time is still the wrong thing to do, right? So for instance, in the human body, when 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 uh, a, a woman is pregnant, you wouldn't just grow you know, you wouldn't just skip steps, right? You have the first, second, third trimester. And within every trimester, there are developmental stages, right? And then uh, the doctor or the technician goes in, does ultrasound and and shows you that, okay, their, their heart's beating, um, you know, their legs are growing and, you know, you can, you can see the shape coming in. And it's like, oh, wow, that's exciting. And you can see these like little, little uh, milestones that they hit. And then even, and then when, when they, when they're born, you can see that too, right? From right. crawling to walking to, to running. So you don't skip steps in the body. And that's what I'm here to tell people to do because right now, especially in the holistic health space and people entering into natural medicine is that they see, wow, there's so many things I, I should take magnesium. That, that sounds good. I should take B vitamins. Oh, maybe I have methylation issues. I should take a methylated B vitamin. Maybe I have parasites. So let me do a parasite cleanse. I have fungal infections, right? I'm itchy all over my body. That must be it. I got to do that. I got to go on these killers, these binders. Um, you know, I got to do right light therapy. I got to do sauna. I got to buy these things. I got to go to plant-based, you know, eating lifestyle. I got to do carnivore. I got to do paleo. Like what, what do I do? It's so overwhelming. It is. Right? Yep. So, which is, which is amazing at the same time, because we have uh holistic health people who are 
sharing things online and social media and opening up pe- people's uh, mind about you know their bodies and giving them hope right before it was just let me give you a pill right and you know when you get sick enough we'll do surgery <laughs> right you know which is something that happened to my dad my dad had liver cirrhosis that was his first diagnosis and so i went through a whole like decade journey of asking questions of how is it going to heal this body what what can we do can we do can we do herbs can we do natural medicine can we eat a certain way and what i realized was all they all they all they knew all they who who are they they are the UCSF liver transplant team right top hospital in California for this. Um, they were basically telling me that there's nothing you can do. You can give him half your liver or you can wait until he gets sick enough and he can get a live and, and he can get a liver transplant when he, when he's uh, worse enough and his melt score is high enough. So that was the answer that I got. Right. And that herbs and supplements do- doesn't work. So naturally a rebel at heart, I did not accept that. So, you know, this is how I, this is another reason why I ended up doing what I'm doing is because I got to see all that. So, you know, this is how modern medicine treats, you know, people is that, you know, you either wait until you're sick enough and it's a sick care system and nothing is there to help you thrive. And you got the other side of the spectrum, which is like, okay, let me throw the whole kitchen sink at people. Um, and it can be really overwhelming sometimes too. So where AK falls in, lot, in in between is, or in this whole area is, it's really letting the body determine the best course of action. And that's when we use muscle testing, which is an extension of your uh, a neurological response, right? When we test a muscle, what I'm testing for is actually a response coming from the body. So I like to tell people that, look, we need to treat your body. Your body's crying for help, Right. So your symptoms are your, are your body's way of crying for help, but your body doesn't speak in English. Your, your conscious brain does, but your subconscious, your body speaks in neurology, Hmm. right? It's going to tell you something hurts. It's going to tell you something doesn't feel good. It's going to tell you you're tired, you're fatigued, you're depressed, right? Right. That's neurology. So why don't we use neurology to get an answer to get questions to stimulate the system and see if we can get a feedback from it, which is biofeedback. So when we do muscle testing, that's what we're doing. We're trying to see where the problem is. And if there's a problem there for what is the best action to take at that given time, right? That's really interesting. So can you explain to me a little bit more like exactly what muscle testing is? If someone came into you to have muscle testing done, what would you do to them? Yeah. So muscle testing, now muscle testing does not replace things like lab testing, stool testing, you know, um, hair testing and your analysis and all those things or, or MRIs or whatever. Muscle testing is just testing neurological response. So I want to make that clear. When I say diagnosis, it doesn't mean that I'm diagnosing somebody for a disease. What I'm diagnosing is the system within AK, which is, is there energy blockage here? Is there something dysfunctional? Is there a muscle that does not fire correctly? So I'll give you an example of how this works. Um, Cause I think examples are, are a little bit better when people, it helps understand people understand better. So if somebody comes in, let's just say they have um, low back pain, right? And I go, okay, great. You came in, you have low back pain, and I'm assessing your body and maybe the, in their history, they have some other things going on as well, metabolically, but I assessed their low back pain and I go, how long have you had this low back pain? I've had this for a long time. You know, I do this, this hurts. I do this. It doesn't help. I take my Tylenol, my leave helps a little bit, but it doesn't fully go away. I'm just so tired of it. I'm like, okay, you had this low back pain for a long time. So what I'll do is I'll test specific muscles around the low back, right? So people understand that there's different muscles. You have like things like your biceps and your arms, your quads and your legs. Well, there's muscles around your low back and your abdomen. You have your abdominal muscles, which are many of them. And then you have your quadrilus lumborum in the back. You have your sacrospinalis in the back. There's specific muscles. And then there's this muscle called the psoas muscle. Okay. The psoas muscle is connected to your lumbar spine and down towards the femur, which is down in the hip. 
So I attest this muscle and this muscle is off. It's a hip flexor muscle. So I don't know why, but I can, when I test it, it's a weak muscle. Like the body just cannot hold it. The person cannot fight me on it. Um, it just doesn't work properly. It's not firing correctly. So what happens is the body is smart. It's going to compensate. So every time this person walks where they need to, where they need to bring their leg in front of them, they need to activate that muscle. Instead of activating that muscle, they're going to activate other parts of the body to compensate because you're going to get the job done one way or another, but it's not the most efficient and your body will help you get through it. But if you keep doing it in a dysfunctional manner, right, it's sort of like having driving around with a spare tire, right? Something's going to, something's going to go wrong. So now when the body has pain, it's really telling you that I can't stand this anymore. I can't keep going around with the spare tire. Like I'm going to let you know that, okay, the bushings are going out. Right now you have this low back pain. So now I have to figure out why the psoas muscle is not firing correctly. So the psoas muscle is connected to the kidneys, okay, neurologically and through the acupuncture system. It, it's related to the kidneys. Every muscle in the body is connected to an organ. This is how we connect the physical and the biochemical together. Mm. And every organ has different nutrients that it responds well with to help it function better, either detoxify or to nourish, which is to build up. And every organ also has emotions related to them. And in the kidneys, it's in the water element in Chinese medicine. And that is relating to emotionally relates to fear, dread, feeling paralyzed, miffed, which is pissed off, contemplated, wishy-washy, right? So if I, if I have somebody who's, you know, presenting this way, I might ask them, Hey, your psoas doesn't test well. Um, it's weakened. And th these are all the things that it relates to. Maybe you're dehydrated. I'll ask them about hydration. Uh, maybe there's some sort of kidney pathology, right? Have you gotten your kidneys checked? How's your diet? What do you eat? Um, have you had kidney stones before, right? Is there something in your family where, um, somebody dealt with kidney issues before, Hey, emotionally, this is what it relates to. Are you, are you dealing with any, anything like that? Right. And something, and they might tell me, yeah, things have been really stressful. I've been, you know, thinking about my finances, you know, I hear all these things about recession and I have a lot of fear and, you know, my husband, my wife, it's not supporting me and I don't feel supported. Right. And I go, mm, interesting. Cause low back pain is like emotional back support, right? Like mm -hmm. what we say, I got your back right? How supported do you feel? Do you feel lonely in the world? Right? So all these things, you got to tie in all these things on top of, you know, the metabolic, right? Which is the functional medicine side, which is going like, how's, how are you, how are you doing your life? How are you feeding yourself? Are you, is there, do you have toxicity? Are you living in a moldy home? Right? So what it really is, AK applied kinesiology allows me to be, to become the detective and finding out what is the true problem behind her ailment, not just come in and go, I have low back pain. I'm going to adjust you for three times a week. And you're going to come in every single week. Um, and we're just going to do it until it gets better. Um, or you need to you just, you're just, you're so tight, right? You dig in, you dig into their spine. You're like, Oh, you're, you're so tight. You need a massage. You need physical therapy. You need soft tissue. You need to lay on a ball. Right. And you may need all those things, but where we, it could be a disservice if we don't ask those deeper questions and find out what's actually causing right their low back pain right and that's just one example right yeah that's really interesting and i love the thought that all our muscles are attached to an organ i know i had a hurt shoulder just recently and i went to an awesome therapist that was like oh talking about the emotion that's attached to that left shoulder and what could be going on in my life that's causing this pain. And so, yeah, I like the whole body approach type thing. So with muscle testing, can people go um, that have certain health ailments and muscle testing will help them? Yes, absolutely. And again, as, as somebody who does muscle testing, right, we, we never say we treat, if somebody came in with cancer, let's just say, which happens all the time, <laughs> um, or, you know, Lyme disease, autoimmune, you know, all types of, you know, very, very severe stuff. They would say, can you help me? Can you treat me? Can you treat this condition? And say, I don't treat 
conditions. I don't treat disease. I treat people, right? And it's my job to find out what is not functioning correctly in your body. And when we help you elevate the function of that specific system, whether it's your immune system, your detoxification system, your cardiovascular system, when we help that system function better, disease and dysfunction goes away, right? So, and then you also maintain health and then improve health and then achieve optimal health. So yes, the answer, the answer to that is, is yes, you can, you can go in with like really any condition, any issue, right? And the goal is to allow your body to upregulate and to optimize so that you can hopefully allow the body to heal from that issue that you're dealing with. And let's just say you, let's just say you can't, let's just say it's a, it's a terminal illness um, or something really severe or something genetic, right? Or maybe you need surgery. If you do, well, you're going to have to, it's best, right? The outcomes of that surgery or that procedure is best when you get your body as healthy as possible and then you go through it, right? And so applied kinesiology, I believe, is is one of the most powerful things that people can be doing for their health. So let me ask you a few specifics because I had someone recently tell me that they had terrible night sleep. They had a hard time sleeping, didn't get good quality sleep, but then went and did muscle testing and now they can sleep a lot better. Is that something that muscle testing can help? Absolutely. Really anything. And, you know, without this, with the sleep issue, right? My first thought goes the pineal gland, right? So this little, little, uh, endocrine gland, right? Right in, in the middle of your head, right? That regulates your circadian rhythm. Uh, and also secretes melatonin, right? Which we, a lot of people know that that helps with sleep. Um, so I, what I would do is I would muscle test, right? I would muscle test the body and I would check if the pineal gland reflex, right? I would check the energy points, the acupuncture points on them. And I would do it a muscle test to see, hey, is this area actually functioning correctly or not? If it's not functioning correctly, then the body will show a weakness, right? The muscle test will test weak. And that's a response, right? It, it may not mean that it's actually weak. It just means that it's not functioning at 100%. It may be functioning at 95%, but that's enough to throw off your sleep. And again, your body's trying to communicate with you, telling you that, hey, something's going on, right? Right. Maybe, you're, maybe you're, you have toxicity, right? That's affecting the body. Maybe you're doing too much caffeine. Maybe there's an adrenal gland related issue, right? Maybe there's some sort of hormonal imbalance, right? Maybe you have a, a deficiency, a nutrient deficiency, right? So for instance, like it, magnesium, inositol, L-theanine, right? Those are all things that help the body sleep. But what do you need? Do I just buy all of those? Do I just try them out? Do I just blindly do it, right? That's the same thing as allopathic medicine, which is you come in with high blood pressure and the doctor gives you this high blood pressure, uh, this blood pressure lowering medication, right? Lisinopril or, or something like that. And why do they give you that? Well, they're probably giving it to you because that's who they're associated with, right? The, the drug rep came in last week and was like, we're doing a special thing and I'm going to take you out to dinner, right? Which is by the way, how the pharmaceutical industry works. So, and now they're prescribing you lisinopril. Well, there's X, Y, there's all these side effects. And you come back and go, I'm dizzy. I cannot function. I feel weak. And look, what's going on? Okay, this this one doesn't work. All right, let's let's switch you to another one. You come back, I have rashes. I have hives all over my body, all right? Okay, this one's not working. Let's switch you to another one, all right? And you switch about four or five times. And then finally, it's like, oh, this, this is the... How many times have we heard, all right? We finally... Like my doctor finally found the medication that works for me, the cholesterol medication, the blood pressure medication that, that works. Right. And I have no side effects with this one. It's like, could we have, I asked the question, what would happen if medical doctors adopted muscle testing in the practice and just challenge the body, stimulate the body and ask the body and muscle test the body and go, Hmm, does this function well on the body? Right. Does this produce a positive response? Right. And, and that's really what science is all about. It's about this trial and error, right? So what I do is 
I don't, I don't do the guesswork, right? There's, there's too many things that are, uh, that, that can get conflicting out there with all this information about health. So I tell people, I'm like, look, let's not guess, let, let's test, test it, right? Yep. So that's what muscle testing can allow us to do. Yeah, I tell my followers that all the time. Don't guess, test, because I am one of those people out there teaching about magnesium and red light therapy and all these different things because I want them to know that there's choices out there and there's other treatments out there. But I agree, you need to test, not guess. So let me just ask you about two other things with muscle testing. I've heard that it's effective for those that deal with anxiety. Is that true? Yeah. And again, you know, these are specific conditions, but finding out what is the root cause of that anxiety, right? Anxiety could be maybe your body's trying to, is is deficient in movement, right? Like for instance, hunger is the signal for food, thirst is a signal for water, anxiety may be the signal for movement, right? So I would go, hey, how are you moving in your life? Are you or maybe it's maybe it's an exercise movement. Maybe you're moving poorly. Maybe there's a nutrient deficiency. Maybe that there's neurotransmitters, right, made from your gut and your microbiome that's that or the and then that's not functioning correctly. And there's something going on in your gut. Maybe it's your liver, right? Anxiety, instability, or muddled instability, um, emotional instability. That all relates to thyroid and adrenals. So, you know, I put those pieces together and I, I asked the questions of like, Hey, have you had any history of thyroid conditions? No, I don't. I don't, I don't, or some people go, I don't know what's going on in my body. I mean, great. We're going to find out. So I'll muscle test to see, and I'll challenge the body to see, Hey, how's the energy of the thyroid doing? How's the energy of the adrenal glands doing? Right. And if it's not working at a hundred percent, what we're going to do is we're going to, we're going to treat it. We're going to fix it. We're going to help that area function better before it becomes pathological, right? And there's a difference between functional versus pathological, right? And and anxiety might be just the first presentation of something that's functionally off. And if we don't treat it for a while, and that that could become something else that's pathological. So the goal is to treat things before it gets worse. Makes sense. Okay, one last uh, symptom, just because I have a lot of followers right now dealing with spring allergies, So could they go and get muscle testing done to have that help with their allergies? Yeah, that is so good. I have so much to say about that, actually. So allergies, most people will blame the the allergen, right? Oh, it's the pollen in the air. It's this dairy. It's the cat, right? It's this dog. It's this thing that's flying around. And I ask the question, why is your immune system dysregulated? Why is your immune system not able to handle or it's overreacting and freaking out to some sort of allergen or substance. What is insulting the immune system that is causing it to react like that, right? Mm. See, when I ask these questions, these are deeper level questions, right? This is becoming the detective and finding out truly the root cause versus going like, let's just take quercetin. Let's just take vitamin C, uh, stinging nettle leaf right? Here's some, uh, here's some antihistamine, right? Whether it's Claritin or something like that, Benadryl, right? Or maybe it's, maybe like we need you to process your histamines better, right? Whatever the case may be. So again, there's, it's trying to do, not do the allopathic thing, which is treat just a symptom, right? But when you muscle test, what we can do is go, hmm, if you're allergic, let's just say, if you're reacting to pollen or cats or dander or something like that, right? Then we got to cross check the body to see what is not functioning. Maybe it's the thymus gland or the spleen organ, which are the two main immune system organs in the body. And maybe they are hyperactive or overactive. Then we have to go, well, what is causing it to be overactive? Like, why do you have such an uh, an inflammatory response to something, right? Maybe you have high and in functional medicine, we would look at like IgEs and IgMs and IgAs and all the immune things. And we would run like a stool analysis and a blood test and, and all these fancy testing that would tell you that, oh, look, you know, it comes back and there's like red flags everywhere. Then the question is like, what do I do with that information? Right. And this is where muscle testing could be powerful because lab testing allows you to see what's on the map, right? I see San Francisco, LA, New York, Minnesota, 
Florida. If I want to go from here, Orange County to New York, right? I, I know I have to head in kind of this direction, but I don't know what I need to, I don't know what, when I go outside my home, I don't know where I'm turning left or right. And then after that, if I'm turning left and right, which highway to go on, what's the most efficient method? I can probably eventually get there if I go down to Mexico and then drive back up to Florida and then I end up in Montana and then I finally land in New York. But with muscle testing, it's the GPS, right? Turn left here, right? Go to this lane, right? Two miles out, you're going to you're gonna exit here. So that's what muscle testing allows us to do, right? Is to find out, number one, root cause, right? Is there something insulting the immune system that's causing you to have an abnormal allergic response to a specific substance, right? Maybe it's higher parasite load because higher parasite load can drive up your uh, TH1 and TH2 imbalance in the body, right? These are immune, the immune system talk right here. So because of that, now your immune system is more sensitive. Anything that could be potentially an allergen, right? Just tips the scale, right? The, the camel's back is already loaded up, right? One more straw just breaks it. Right? That- so maybe, maybe there's a deficiency, for instance, and that deficiency can cause you to have an immune reaction as well, too. So interesting. And your analogy of the GPS system was perfect. That made it all click. I was like, oh, that makes sense. Exactly. So I'm now thinking these listeners are probably thinking, well, I would love to have muscle testing done. I'm dealing with anxiety or ADHD or allergies or migraines or whatever it is, stomach issues. So where do they go find someone that does muscle testing? Do they look for a chiropractor? Do they Google muscle testing? What suggestions do you have? Yeah, all the above. Again, unfortunately, the the downside is we don't have a standard of care. And, you know, it's not like we could just go, okay, well, there's there's these people, there's this database, and and there's sort of this. And that's where I tell people, "Hmm, look, the first place I would start is the International College of Applied Kinesiology, ICAKUSA.com. People go to that website and they can punch in their zip code and they can find somebody who ha- is practicing applied kinesiology uh, around them, right? And then uh, and then they can kind of go from there, right? They can interv- interview your practitioners, right? Go there, ask some questions. What is this about? What do you guys do? Have you guys seen my condition before? Um, you know, I heard this thing about muscle testing. What's your view on it? You know, do you think it'll help me? And then you can also Google sometimes because sometimes these websites aren't like 100%. And you can Google applied kinesiology, you can Google uh, muscle testing, you know, f- uh, functional medicine, whatever. And then you can find that out too. So, okay. and then, you know, talk to other providers, talk to other people, right? Talk to holistic minded folks. So they might have somebody who they know who practices this way. Okay, good to know. And really quick, can muscle testing, chiropractic care, things like that, it can be done for everyone, right? Like babies, kids, pregnant women, the old, I mean, everybody, correct? Yeah. My first, or sorry, my, my, my youngest patient was like two days and somebody that I, somebody that I work with in my clinic, I heard that recently she was the, the patient's family had a, had a natural birth and she was there to adjust the baby and, and treat the baby um, literally minutes, you know, seconds after the baby came out. It was, it was amazing. Um, so yes, anywhere from day one to, you know, to as old as you can think of, you know, th- that's what it really is about. Cause the body's, the body's the body, you know, as long as you're living and breathing, um, there is something to optimize. There's something to treat. There's something to get better. There's something to analyze. The nervous system is fine. As long as that nervous system is firing, you can get some answers from it. I love it. I'm going to say this really quick in case some listener needs to hear this, but I have six kids. My first five kids were all so colicky. I mean, I had tried everything from removing certain things from my diet, you know, every herb out there. Finally, my sixth child, they were like, someone told me, go find a chiropractor who does adjustments on little brand new newborns and see if that helps. Night and day difference. My Last baby, baby number six had no colic and I swear it was that. So if anyone's listening and as a newborn, maybe that will help you. So that was sort of off topic, but okay. 
I know we need to wrap up now. I encourage all of you guys to go follow Calvin. He's just amazing with everything that he teaches. But will you tell my listeners where they can find you? Yeah. So my practice is in Orange County. So a lot of people come in, fly in, or or they visit me there. Um, Orange County, California, that is. Uh, My website is Dr. Calvin Ng. So D-R-C-A-L-V-I-N-N-G.com. Um, and I just started a, a new blog up there and it's just me being totally like unfiltered and everything. Uh, and I'm, I just throw out free content on there, uh, try to help people out. I'm going to probably plan on, plan on starting a podcast to just talk about some of these things that I'm talking about and expand them further. So watch out for that. Um, people can find me on Instagram and Facebook, Dr. Calvin Ng. That's where I am probably most active. Okay. Thank you for all that you do. I appreciate all the doctors like you that are trying to provide education for others out there for free. I just think it's an amazing thing that um, so many of you guys are doing. So thank you so much. I always end my podcast with asking my guests what they have found to be the best ingredient in life. What would you say it is? Yeah, that's uh, I love I love that question. By the way, and there's so many after listening to your podcast, I'm like, wow, that's great. That's that's awesome too. <laughs> I know you that's know? what I think every time. I'm always <laughs> like, oh, that is a good one. Yeah, I think as I thought about this question, um, you know, I really thought really deep about it, and I believe that unconditional love is the best ingredient to life. And unconditional love, number one, for yourself, for myself, is is very important right? Because in today's world, it could be very competitive. Um, We can compare a lot. We can criticize a lot, and especially ourselves. And we, a lot of people seek for that perfection, right? It's like, I'll be, I'll be happy when I do this. I'll be happy when uh, I achieve this. I'll be worth it. I'll be worthy once I prove myself. And that's all conditional if we think about it, right? Once I get my degree, then I'll be able to do this, right? Once I hit a million dollars, then I'll, you know, my my life will be so much better and free and I'll be happy, right? And so that is conditional. You're tying in with a, with a state that you want to live in, a happiness state and a joy and a health state to something that you have to um, achieve and get versus just realizing that, look, you know, I love myself the way I am right now. And I have so much love for myself, so much unconditional love for my for myself, that I'm not going to let myself get worse. I'm not going to let myself, um, you know, let myself go. And I'm going to work every day to have progress, right? So progress over perfection. And then unconditional love for others, for other people, for your loved ones um, is so important in your relationships, right? If you're dating, if you're in marriage, that's so important to love the person who you're with um, unconditionally so that you're allowing them right? To be fully who they are and to not hold anything against it and to love them where they're at, right? Which is like like my patients. I love them where they're at. A lot of people don't agree with me, but I love them where they're at. With parents, if you're a parent, it's the same thing. Unconditional love for your kids. Uh, we know that so many emotional wounds start during childhood and it's usually caused by this conditional love, right? Get good grades and, you know, or like you needed to be doing this or you shouldn't be hanging out with these people and what, whatnot. And the child grows up seeking for validation. And the seeking of validation is this like little seed that gets planted in them and it starts growing and it can become, you know, disease later on as in their life, right? They, they don't, they, they wind up like, why am I the way that I am? So, you know, unconditional love, I believe, is the uh, best ingredient to life. And through through un- unconditional love, we can get better, right? We can heal and we can grow. I love that so much because, like you said, I think we do a lot of conditional loving in our society. So I love the thought of unconditional love. And I think it's really hard for people to unconditionally love themselves. Um, I think a lot of us are exercising or eating certain ways because we're at war with our body, not because we love our body. And we need to flip that mind thought to, I'm going to eat healthy because I love my body and I want to do the best for my body. Or I'm going to go do muscle testing or find healing because I do love my body and I want the best for it. So I love that thought so much. As we close, are there any last tips that you want to give the listeners? 
Yeah, thank you so much. This has been great. Uh, <laughs> but it, my my one last tip for people is it takes a village, right? So, and, and that applies to everything. Find your village of providers. Find your village of of people who do the work, provide the service. You know, don't just blindly believe in one person. I tell people, hey, don't don't believe in just me. I I'm just one person. I'm not an expert. I'm not a specialist. I'm just a messenger. I'm just passing down information that I've learned in the past. And so I don't know everything and I may not be right. And I constantly change stuff. So that's how you know I'm not always right. And I make mistakes too. So do not follow just, you know, the advice of just one person. Um, you know, it takes a village. Find your tribe of people right? Have your chiropractor, have your massage therapist, have your acupuncturist, have your holistic health coach, have your nutritionist, you know, have your people all around you. Um, and same thing. That's how we operate in life. That's how we, that's how we thrived as a society is that we were looking out for each other and helping people out and, and, and using the service of, and the collective group up regulated and upgraded, you know, society together and got us to where, uh, we are at now, essentially. I love that so much. Thank you so much for being here today. Everybody go follow him on social media if you want to learn more. He just teaches so much. Like I said, he's just has so much knowledge. And thank you again for being here. And thank you for all that you're doing to teach others. Thank you so much. Thank you so much for listening. Remember to subscribe to the Just Ingredients podcast to learn more about your health and good ingredients to life. Plus, get daily tips at just.ingredients on Instagram.